Hi, I'm Michael Sinoff, founder and CEO of HardToFindSeminars.com. For the last five years, I've interviewed the world's best business and marketing minds. Now my challenge is to build the world's largest free resource for online, downloadable audio business interviews. I've learned a lot in the last five years, and today I'm going to show you the skills you need to survive. Give me your best, most simplest definition for a layperson of what a joint venture is. I think the ideal of a joint venture is to understand a very important thing, and that is that we don't have money problems, we've got thinking problems. Hi, this is Michael Sinop with HardToFindSeminars.com. Here is a one-hour recording with one of the world's most foremost experts on joint ventures. He's been educating businesses on how to set up and establish and make money on joint ventures for over 20 years. It's a fascinating call where we cover a huge array of topics, situations, concerns, and most importantly, many success stories. And get ready. Enjoy. Now, a lot of people hear joint ventures. You've got Internet marketers all over the place talking about how great joint ventures is. And to a lot of people who have never heard this term, how would you characterize or give a definition to it in a layman's term for someone who has no experience with business? What is a joint venture? Well, a joint venture, essentially, Mike, is when people work together to achieve a common goal and share the resources that are currently available to them. We teach people to broker joint venture deals, so it might not be in their own business. In fact, they might not even have a business, but we show them how to link people up and get paid for that using existing resources. So is your focus more on showing people how to become like a middleman for setting up joint ventures or actually doing the joint ventures themselves if they have a business, or is there a difference? No, we actually do both because people in business often get stuck in terms of sales. They how much money is coming into their business. What they don't realize is that it's not about sales, it's about net profit after tax. So they can use joint ventures in their own businesses to increase their sales, and they can also go back and increase extra revenues and profits into their lives from other businesses, which is often even more lucrative. We've heard of a real estate broker. What is a joint venture broker? So I think the, probably the best thing is to let me give you an example of what happened yesterday. Colin called me up. He's one of the people that is involved with us. And he said, you know, I was talking to a guy who has a very successful online membership of entrepreneurs. He's got 11,000 members. He's got three business magazines. And he's interested in talking with you. And that's all Colin did. He basically picked up the phone and called me, put the phone down, took him five minutes. Now, is Colin uh, one of your members of your joint venture inner circle club? Yeah, he's a member, but he doesn't own anything. He's just one of our members. And he called me up and he said, this is what can happen. So I called this fellow back, and in 25 minutes we agreed that he would advertise my products and services and business in all three of these glossy magazines on his website and to his 11,000 members on a contingency basis, which means that I would pay him for any business that came out of that. No cost or risk to me, no cost or risk to him. I then contacted Winston, who is a fellow that also works with us on websites. He's putting all the technology together. He's doing all the banners, the graphic art, everything else. And we put together a deal whereby all four of us, Colin, myself, Winston, and the other guy, who owns all this resource, all these, these connections, all of us together are going to make money if something works. If it doesn't work, nobody loses anything. Everybody's happy. Let's look at the four players. You've got you involved. You're going to make money on the sales and the new customers for your, all your joint venture products through his list, right? That's right. He's going to make a piece of the action on those sales because it's his names and his list and his magazines, right? Right. And how's the web guy going to make money? Does he get a piece of it? Yeah, he's going to get a piece. So Winston, Colin, myself, and the other guy, all four of us are going to make money if anything happens. The original guy, Colin, just picked up the phone and called me. It took him five minutes. All the other work is getting done by other people, and everything's being leveraged. So he just had to sit back and wait for the money to come in. So, look, you've got Colin who did nothing but bring people together. So right. is the money split equal, or how do you decide who makes what? Well, we decide that between the four of us. We essentially look at what's fair in terms of input, how much work they put in, what do they own, how much do they deserve. 
So it depends on what people put in, it depends on, on what you negotiate, and everything is negotiable. I pay out up to 50% in commissions because it's money I wouldn't have had, and on the back end, everybody can make money again. So in this deal, who would you characterize as the largest assets? I think I would have the largest assets because I own... But on the other hand, uh, Colin is making money for a phone call. The other guy is leveraging his existing database and building a relationship with us. So everybody wins, and everybody is very happy with the deal. Well, a lot of people, I think, have a hard time figuring out what's fair and how much each person gets. So if the guy with 11,000 members, he's got the names, okay? Right. You've got the products. Colin was a bird dog, basically, and made an introduction, which, in my opinion, probably would have not as much clout as the name in the product, and then you get the website guy who's going to trade some of his time and labor. So how are you going to divvy this deal up if it works? Can you give a specific example for anyone who may be battling? Well, I don't have, I've actually got the right in front of me. On a $197 deal, the guy who owns the list would get $50. Um, the guy that's doing the website would get 35 Colin would get 15 and I would get 97 No, oh, that's pretty good. Now, are you splitting up the gross sales or the net uh, profits? Well, everything that we do is gross because we're selling online products and uh, membership is really no cost to us. When it comes to boot camp, I get a little bit more because that's a full-day seminar. But having said that, you know, like to put an extra guy into a boot camp doesn't cost me anything, really. An extra seat in the seminar. If you're a joint venture broker or if you're setting up joint ventures and you have to decide what the other person is going to get paid. Is it smart to do it on gross versus net and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each that you can think of? Well, that's a very good question and a lot of people fudge the numbers when it comes to gross and net. How can they do that? Tell me. I'll give you another real life example. I had a guy that had a website business and he was giving me 20% of the gross of any business I brought in. So if he got paid 15000 I would get 20% of that $3,000. And that was working really well. And then one day he called me up and he said, you know, I've got all these increased costs. Do you mind if I deduct my costs? And instead of taking the time to find out what he was talking about and what his costs were deemed to be, all of a sudden he said his costs were 50%. You know, cut me in half. So he basically said, do you mind if we change our agreement from gross to net? That's what he basically asked you. That's right. But up until then, everything had worked out. So it's very important because what the net really is and what people deem it to be depends on whether it's profit for new business or whether it's incremental business. A good example is a restaurant. A restaurant has a food cost percentage averaging in North America about 32%. If he's factoring in his overhead, his labor, his electricity, his hydro, everything is factored in, then he's not making a lot of money. But if his restaurant is already running and his overhead is already being paid and another guy walks into the restaurant during a meal and sits down and has a meal, his real food cost percentage which is 32%. So he's making 68% on that meal because he's not factoring in his incremental profit. His overhead has already been covered. The difference between that incremental profit where he's looking at his real cost or whether he's including his overhead or not. And that needs to be established up front. And you can be as sophisticated or, or as simple as you like. We had one person who wanted to start factoring a cost from Visa and MasterCard. You know, so she's getting a little bit cheap. So it depends to what extent you want to take it and what sort of relationship is in place when you go into that. Well, what do you teach in your boot camps? When a guy has two parties, okay, he's acting as a broker. He's got someone who's got product and he's got someone who's got a list. He brings them together and they're both willing partners. What do you train the broker how to set this up so all three parties have an understanding of exactly what's going to happen? Hi, it's Michael Sinoff with Hard to find at seminars.com. Thanks for watching this video. You know, many of my interviews last 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, sometimes even up to two and a half hours long. They're actual mini seminars, and you've just listened to a short sample of just one of over 117 hours of exciting, hard hitting, mind blowing interviews on how to make money in direct mail, advertising, copywriting. I assure you, there is not a resource anywhere on the internet or on the Planet that comes close to the free information I provide at hardtofindseminars.com. So go right now to hardtofindseminars.com and you'll have free access to 117 hours of audio interviews with typed word-for-word -word downloadable transcripts and downloadable MP3 files. Please browse more of the videos or go right directly to hardtofindseminars.com. Thanks for watching.